Yeah, so this is a this is an intro. So this is um a video from Wildside Hip Hop, and it says the following: two yes, the following two sneaker store employees. Yes, two single store employees both get fired after being exposed for backdooring raffle for the new Kobe Six Grinches on TikTok. So, of course, you know, like most sneakerheads are aware, this whole backdooring of shoes has been, you know, happening since the beginning of time. Even when we used to queue outside the stores, essentially the whole idea would be um, Nike would send a store and alloc uh, 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 would allocate a store a certain amount of shoes to sell of a particular limited edition trainer that everyone was that's high, hugely highly in demand. And then um, whatever would be sent to a store, the kind of store would have their own dedicated or you know contact book of people that they sort of deal with friends and family who they sort of look after you know friends whatever they may be high celeb uh, celebrities whatever the likes and they would sort of kind of um put aside a certain amount of pets for them and then whatever was left over will be made available to the public so there was always the idea we always knew we wanted no assumption that if nike said they sent a thousand pairs over to the uk that that store would get a thousand pairs right we knew that some would go to seeding some would be backdoored some would be slipped under a table never to be seen again like you know a certain so-and-so did at 94 yeah a couple of few times but you know we kind of accepted it but there was still the possibility that more often than not there was still a, a way more available for the public to buy that gave an option to you know you had access or the opportunity to buy if you queued up ahead of time now obviously with all these new sneaker apps and this whole weird queuing system uh rsvping uh, liking of pictures and stuff it's just gotten really really annoying this year more so especially being at home and having to you know notify yourself on a sneakers app and shit and i don't know man about you guys but i'm just over it i'm just fed up i'm over it and I don't know why we just keep accepting this lie that the sneaker, you know, brands have at the moment where they're um, unable or unwilling, uh, unwillingness to just manufacture more shoes. Uh, sneaker culture is now a billion dollar industry, right? Um, everybody under the sun buys rare or limited edition trainers, whether to flip or to wear. It's not a thing that's sort of reserved for a small subculture of people on certain forums. It's global. It's worldwide. It's... Um, it doesn't discriminate between genders or ages everybody knows about shoes now at the moment so there is um a, there is an appetite for them right so you would assume that a lot of these companies will just want to make more or just allow people more access to actually purchase them because i don't understand for the life of me why you can buy a ps5 you know of course maybe not now because stocks are low but eventually if you're willing to wait you know you're going to get a ps5 then it's not like you're never going to be able to get one but some of these shoes when they come out you just see them being advertised online you see all these influencers wearing them on your social media feed and there's no need of for some of these brands to send out shoes to certain influencers because what's the point of showing us shoes that we're never going to be able to wear ourselves anyway you're essentially just stroking the ego of the influencer and really not marketing the shoe to anybody that really wants to wear them because they're never going to get them anyway um so i'd much rather see a little bit more um not democratization but just more access to rare trainers so that we don't end up in situations like this where it appears like these two gentlemen won a raffle for these limited edition kobe six grinches went up to the store to go collect them and then the staff members made up lies that they somehow got there outside of their pickup window and that the shoes are now gone which is essentially um, evidence of some sort of backdoor dealings or maybe they were sort of offered um, a huge amount of cash up front for the shoes and because they're retail assistants and they probably make shitty money they were like you know what i'm gonna take that and just hopefully if i lie to the right person they're just gonna keep it moving because in in more cases than not because i've worked in training stores you can get away with that lie especially when it's somebody that's not that experienced with shoes doesn't really know what goes on behind the scenes they can be gutted but they can sort of like oh man i wish i would have got here a bit earlier right but if you're talking to an actual sneakerhead that's been buying shoes for a good while and knows what happens behind the scenes, there's no way they're going to believe you that somehow they happen to come there at the wrong time. It's just not going to run. So let's play the video and hear what they have to say. <clears throat> Here today, Sheik, they did not guarantee me my damn Kobe's. Me and this fella right here, we cannot get our shoes because they said they don't have them, even though we won them on the raffle. Yeah. You got two. this number right here. It does not it's work. They told me 11 to 4. They don't have our shoe. They're sitting here right now, not working with me and my man right here. Are you sure you don't have a 12 and a half? No. 
to make things simple, give me a 12 and a half and give my hands a 12. And they can't give us a shoe. As a puzzle, those girls got those girls got fired. And again, um, I don't blame the girls too tough because again, working in retail, you get paid shitty wages. It is what it is. This is all a symptom of the greed of sneaker companies, right? Of not allowing fans and customers alike, and people like myself just want to buy the shoes, right? My days of queuing up in front of a store in the cold, um, eating a McDonald's and busting joke with my friends. Although they were some of the best experiences I had growing up, and were uh, very formative in terms of my interests, in terms of my social group. That's not something I want to revisit. I've got the means. I've got the disposal disposable income and i've got the um access or you know especially with internet or that i don't know whatever it may be to get these shoes allow me to buy them and if you want to allow you know the younger generation option to kind of queue up in front of stores or to make it a bit more of a chase give them the opportunity as well but the idea that you can buy the latest iphone the latest computer console for the most part most bits of fashion if you're you know put your finger on a buzzer but you somehow can't get a hold of shoes and once they're gone they're gone completely is insane considering like i said sneaker industry is a billion dollar industry if anything every shoe these brands are putting out there they're hoping it's the next easy it's not like they're putting out shoes and just flying them out there willy-nilly all these brands are treating their sneaker releases similar to like i forgot who the advice was it might have been quincy jones where they said um, you should treat every record that you're making like a hit single right because you never know what's going to catch i think a lot of these companies are doing the same thing with these new models they're putting out all these new trainers they're putting out all these new retros um, these new shapes collaborations whatever it may be updates on the soul bloody blah blah updates on the classic model and they're hoping that that is a shoe that's going to become a cult classic that's what they're hoping so if that's the case allow more more people to purchase them allow more people because this whole scarce this whole kind of manufactured scarcity thing doesn't work it just makes it harder for the people that actually want to get the shoes not to get them and also if anything if you look at it it kind of dilutes the reselling business the industry of reselling isn't necessarily um it doesn't really make any sense right why is it that a paris dunk is far more it's like you know 10 times maybe 15 times the value of something that came out recently just because it's actually the paris dunk actually has a story actually has doesn't have manufacturer scarcity it's actually something that people will actually want all the stuff has been manufacturer scarcity stuff on the line the prices are really odd so there even the resale market has been affected by this weird um resistance or reluctance for these brands to just manufacture shoes for the people that actually want to wear it and then again look who suffers it's the people on the bottom of the rungs that ladder these two girls who probably going to make a bit extra cash during the holiday period during the pandemic they thought they could grab a quick lick off the back of these guys not knowing that these guys were well informed and now they've essentially lost their job even though i'm assuming they got a bit of money in their back pocket but still it's like look who's having to pay the price of such a thing guys i'm aware of the situation already i'm already in contact with my grandparents and corporate we are going to figure out what's going on those two employees Okay, that's a bit retarded. You know what I mean? If you're a grown man, you have to contact your grandparents to get in touch with the corporate. You're a big man child. That I don't condone. Is that you're talking to, we plan on firing them and hiring new employees pretty soon. And we're going to try to find and allocate those. Oh, sorry. That's the actual owner of the store. I take that back. That seems like the owner of the store who's basically saying, hey, I'm aware of what's going on. We're firing the store employees that did that. I'm guessing the grandparents own that store or they're the sort of mum and pup sort of um, faces of the store. Okay, I take that back. I, I, I thought I was just, I thought I was one of the sneakerheads. Kobe's for you guys because, you know, my family built that brand from scratch and I hate it when, you know, greedy and shady employees do things like that and sell things behind our backs because that doesn't do anything for ourselves and our brand. So we'll take care of you. I'm going to look into it and I'll have them fired ASAP. Fair play again. He, he stepped up to the plate. But again, I think a lot of this can be rectified via the sneaker brands taking ownership and deciding hey we see that all you kids love these shoes and guys and adults like myself here's access to the shoes that you want to purchase hopefully you purchase them within this window once that window's gone it's cool but again there's not enough quantities the windows are small the uh, access to the options to buy are flipping annoying i don't want to have to like a flipping instagram profile make a one minute video um you know film myself wanking like it's just long like all that is long let me buy the shoes let me keep myself moving and allow all this other circus stuff that's my opinion